Welcome everybody, good evening. Uh, I'm really uh, surprised and, and I want to give a big shout out to everybody of you for staying up here this late uh, because it's already past six. So uh, I'll do my best to make it as, as quickly and swift and interactive as possible. That way we can all get home earlier and uh, get perhaps some beers or I don't know what later on. So uh, let's get into it. So this talk is uh, about JobRunner. Uh, it's uh, a library uh, and I'm a little bit biased because of course I created it. Um, it's uh, the ultimate library for background pro job processing in Java. It's distributed. That means that um, many servers together can work on jobs. It's backed by persistent storage and it's open for commercial use, of course. And you can find out everything on it on GitHub. Um, and I must say that I'm, I'm really surprised last year that um, ThoughtWorks recommended JobRunner and put it in their technology radar. So I still, well, it still feels awkward to mention it, but apparently they are a fan of JobRunner and they are enjoying using it. Then uh, the agenda, quick introduction, who am I, who are you guys? That's also something that I'm interested in. Then uh, I'll give a small introduction about how uh, JobRunner started. Uh, and since we're all developers here, I know that talk is cheap and I'll do some live coding. Um, and depending on the time and how we all feel, there's perhaps some times for the deep uh, internals of JobRunner. Uh, we'll look at job runner today and tomorrow, uh, Q&A, and eating my own dog food is the live coding, in fact, but we'll do that in the middle today. So, who am I? Uh, developer, uh, beer lover. Uh, this means that I was born in the right country, because I think here in Belgium we have more types of beer than inhabitants in total. So, this is uh, <laughs> the good country to be in, in that case. Feel free to reach out if afterwards, uh, the top right, if you have any questions or so. So, uh, are you all enjoying DevOps? Yeah. Yes, okay. For the people that came in early, uh, those already know that there is some sugar treats. Uh, after the talk, just come on over, have some uh, treats, because I know we're, uh, it's almost dinner time, and yeah, it's, uh, I know you're hungry, so that's why we have so foreseen some uh, treats. And then another question, is anybody already using JobRunner by any chance? One, two, three. Has uh, anybody already heard of the library before that? All right, some more hands, okay, cool. Um, still think that I should fire my marketing manager because yeah, I saw only a couple of hands and it means that you, I should fire myself because yeah, I'm the more, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how did this all start? Um, well, three years ago, uh, I was freelancing back then and they asked me to uh, go in, uh, help with a greenfield project and please, have a look at the quotes surrounding the Greenfield project. Um, it was in FinTech and uh, it was e-invoicing, so it meant a gateway to the Peplum network. It was middleware, in fact, that we were building. Um, just to give you a small uh, introduction, what is Peplum? Um, it stands for the Pan-European Public Procurement Online. And as you all know, we're here in Belgium. This is like where the uh, European Commission is located. And this is why these people make so much money, I think, because they can come up with this difficult names for something that is just really simple. It's e-invoicing. Um, and of course, it's uh, bank related, so it must be XML like always. So what is a PEPL document? It's uh, a document describing, uh, for example, an invoice uh, and the actual invoice is embedded within this XML document. Perhaps interesting, uh, the EU is um, thinking about requiring this in 2025 for everybody. So also for freelancers, we, the 
the idea would be that we all would need to use uh, Pebble to invoice our customers to make ev everything traceable, digital. Um, so yeah. But like I mentioned, uh, it was uh, a greenfield project, but they were working for on it already for a year, and it was a microservice architecture. Um, that meant there was a lot of restful microservices on Google Cloud. The first call was an asynchronous API where they delivered us the PDF or the invoice. And that was then uh, saved, and next an event was put on PubSub for further processing. All the other communication was synchronous and used RESTful APIs. And the goal was to process millions of documents per day. Uh, and yeah, actual, we didn't process that much documents uh, at all. And me, myself, I'm not a, that big of a fan of microservices. I don't know whether people watched Oliver Drodbrom's talk about Spring Modulit, like the, the modeler Monolit. Uh, that's more my cup of tea. Because um, microservices, yeah, processing wasn't retired on failure. And we didn't have any monitoring when I joined. By the way, uh, I joined when the project was already busy for a year in development, and we had to launch three months after I joined. So um, logging was done without correlation IDs. Invoices got lost, messages are just accumulated on the dead letter queue, and if you're doing something with money, the last thing that you want to happen is uh, invoices being lost. So this was the Greenfield project that I, mis I imagined myself when I joined them. This is how I felt after two <laughs> weeks inside the project. I considered the career switch to HTML designer or so, but yeah, that's not my thing. So um, I went looking for some other solutions, and they are either vendor-specific, which means cloud-based, and yeah, uh, that was not an option back then for them. They require extra infra infrastructure, like Apache Kafka or Apache Hadoop, Spark. They all... Uh, have some extra infrastructure. And when I went to some of the infrastructure people and I asked, uh, can you install uh, Hadoop FS perhaps? And yeah, they didn't even mention this. They were looking at me like, Hadoop FS, is this something in IT or is this dinner? Or um, And there's no one-stop open source solution that is easy to use, distributed that leverages your existing infrastructure, that includes monitoring, and that has resilience built in. So that's, uh, I, no, sorry. I believe, however, that we are not all working for Facebook, LinkedIn, or Netflix, and process petabytes of data per day. And I removed Twitter because I think everybody got fired by Elon Musk. Um, I just think that we often need to solve complex business processes with a moderate amount, moderate amount of data. Think gigabytes, maybe terabytes. I also don't think that we need extra infrastructure just to run some background jobs. Let's keep it simple and stupid and reuse proven technologies like SQL and NoSQL databases. I think that creating and running jobs should be fast and easy. Failing jobs should be retried automatically and only bug me personally if they don't succeed after a while. It should be resilient out of the box. I believe we should have instant insights in how our jobs are doing. And I also believe that such a tool should be self-maintaining and be plug and play. And these are the beliefs that I kept myself to when I started working on JobRunner and where I keep myself today to if I do some change or add a new feature. So the idea JobRunner was born and um, it's simple. I'll give a live demo later on. You can just use any Java 8 Lambda 
to create a background job. It's distributed and it's cluster friendly. It will use your existing infrastructure, can be a SQL database, no SQL database. It's embeddable. What that means is that you just add one Maven dependency and that's it. Uh, JobRunner itself has one transient depend uh, dependency, which is ASM. Um, but you don't need to ask your infrastructure team to uh, set up extra infrastructure. It's resilient. It does retries automatically. And it comes with an out-of-the-box dashboard, so monitoring is included. And on top of that, it integrates with the best. So it uh, integrates uh, with Spring Boot, Micronaut, and Quarkus. Let's see how that all looks. So if you want to create a background shop, I think it should not be harder than that. Backgroundshop.nq, systemout.println, and your message or any other job that you would like to run. And this is the dashboard that comes out of the box with it. So, enough theory. I say it's time we do some uh, live coding. And this is always the exciting part for the people standing here. So I want to make this like a mob grouping, a mob programming session. So um, shared responsibility. <laughs> uh, I'm going to create a new project. I'll first change perhaps my team. That way you can all see this perhaps better. Um, and I'm still on Java 17. I thought uh, I really need to upgrade, but I didn't want to download everything via my cell phone uh, mobile connection today. So yeah, ne next thing uh, is uh, upgrading to J uh, Java 21. Voila, here we are. And then the first thing that we need to do is add some dependencies. I'm really going to keep it simple here. Um, I'm just adding JobRunner itself, logback for logging, and Jackson. Why Jackson? Well, JobRunner uses JSON internally to save stuff into the database uh, as JSON blobs. And that's where you can either use uh, Jackson, JSON from Google, or JSON B if you're uh, on Quarkus. So let's reload the dependencies. And let's start typing. And let's go to, oh, and the desk is going down here, so hence the scrolling mouse. Um, let's go to presenter mode. And the first thing that I'm going to do now is really simple, create a new Java class, org.jobrunner.example.main. Um, and if you're using Spring Boot or Quarkus, the setup that I will be doing now is not necessary, of course. But now uh, I wanted to make things really e easy to understand, not do all the integrations. So to ju just uh, start it, what we do is we do jobrunner.configure. We will want to use a storage provider. In this case, I will be using the in-memory storage provider. But if I do that, of course, it won't be distributed. Uh, you can also use a SQL or a NoSQL uh, storage provider, of course. I want to have jobs processing. I want to have a dashboard. And I have got the ID for some reason that I am forgetting something, but let's see. Uh, then we initialize it, and then you see two options, job scheduler and job re request scheduler. Uh, I don't have enough time to explain a little bit the difference, but uh, complete difference, but the, the big thing to know is that when you use job scheduler, you can just use the Java 8 Lambda. If you're using the job request scheduler, it's like a command command handler pattern that you can use. So 
Voilà. I now have job uh, runner configured, and what I then can do is I can start uh, running jobs. And in this example, I just will create a new uh, service. So let's do it services, uh, my service. And this service can, for example, be any spring bean, any Quarkus bean, whatever it, it is. Uh, and here I now will just use um, a method. And in this case, it can be a long running method. What shall we do in it? We start by selling the job has started. Then we do some thread sleeping because yeah, it's a long running job. And I know you all want to get home. Um, but yeah, it's only 15 seconds and I, oh, I will add some other 15 seconds to it. Um, in the middle. And the job has finished. Your job doesn't always has to be a long running, it doesn't have to be a long running job. The reason that I'm doing this is because that allows me to show some stuff in the dashboard. Um, the important thing I also want to point out here is you can embrace exceptions. Just throw exceptions uh, like you would do normally because JobRunner will automatically retry those exceptions. Uh, perhaps I can give a demo about that later on. And then, what do we want to do? Jobscroller.nq. And of course, I need uh, to know which job do I want to run. In this case, I want to run my service. And I'll give you different examples on how to do this. And then we provide a Lambda, my long running method. This is one way to do it. The other way to do it is I just create a new uh, my service. And then I can just do like this. Uh, as I'm not using Spring Boot for the moment or anything else, what will happen? Uh, JobRunner just uses internally the reflection APIs to instantiate all these jobs uh, in this case. So let's run this. And if I would now have, there it is. And I'll already open my browser here in this case. Um, da -da -da -da. Command. Where is the run dialog box? Something went wrong. Building. This is a Mac M1. <laughs> uh, okay, all right, sorry for that. That explains something. No, oh, there's still some stuff that needs to die. Sorry for that. Ah, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So this one is the, not a, no, no, the, why is it not switching? It's running though now, but this is the one with too many, uh, this that doesn't, uh, thank you for mentioning it, this doesn't, up, up. Yes, too many example projects. Let's run this one again. Cross my fingers. Too many EDAs is b apparently a bad um, idea when you're presenting. All right. 
So, what does it says? Job runner dashboard using in memory storage provider started at. And if I go there, we see the dashboard. What does this show? Well, the real time graph shows the amount of jobs that are happening per 15 seconds. And here we can see that our job is already running. And the cool thing about the dashboard is that you have that it's auto updating. You have the option to log stuff from within your job and it will automatically come inside the dashboard. And like you see now, it automatically updated, hey, your job has succeeded. Um, why would you use like the, I'm going to close this because it's bugging me. Why would you, it's on a different screen, that's why. Why would you uh, use the NQ method? Let's say that you have like a tons of jobs that you, no, sorry. Let's say that you have like a um, web shop and uh, there is like a PDF invoice that needs to be generated, picking instructions. Well, in that case, you can just uh, NQ jobs in the web part of your application and have different background job servers automatically pulling jobs from your, uh, yeah, from job runner. And these jobs will then be run inside a different GVM process, process thus not uh, imp impacting the performance of your web frontend. But let's continue. What we can also do is we can schedule jobs in the future. And this is perhaps also something to, to mention. Like if you're using Quartz, there is debate about how uh, well it's maintained for the moment. Uh, I think the job runner is now parity feature, uh, parity has feature parity with Quartz. Um, and I can say I want to run this job it's 60 seconds from now. And then again, I just do test service, my service dot my long running method. Bloop. Restarted it. Okay, there it is. And if we go to the dashboard now, what we see is that there is a scheduled uh, method or a scheduled job. And it mentions, yeah, it will run 80, uh, 45 seconds from now. Uh, let's not wait for that. We've got better things to do. Um, and then last but not least, we have also schedule recurrently. And here you can pass any cron expression or a duration. So let's say that you have like jobs that you would like to run every night, generate reports, I don't know what. Then you can just uh, do, for example, cron.daily. And this means it will run each night at midnight, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then we do again the same thing. On top of that, we can add an annotation saying, hey, the name for this is my long uh, running method. And we can specify the amount of retries. Let's say that it fails and you don't want to retry it 10 times, which is the default, because Job Runner uses uh, internally an exponential back off policy. You can just say, uh, and retry 10 times, I only want to retry three times. So if we do this now, then uh, we will also see the recurring jobs happening in the, f in the front end. Voila. So what do we see? Recurring jobs. Uh, you would have expected to see the uh, oh no, this is the ID, that is the job name, voila. Uh, why is the ID? Well, typically you want to uh, only overwrite certain recurring jobs when you're deploying a new version of your app and stuff like that. So uh, here we now have my long running method. And on top of that, you can have like parameter substitution. So it can be 
uh, report generation for user blah blah blah. Uh, voilà. So this is the end of uh, the demo already, and then let's go back to the talk. Present. Uh, I'll try to re keep it really short because I only have five minutes left anymore. So where is JobRunner today? It's used for medical image processing, web crawling, order fulfillment, document generation, a lot of stuff. Uh, it has 200,000 downloads per month from Maven Central. Uh, this started out as a hobby project for me. I never thought this would happen, to be honest. Uh, and for those that are interested, I have a talk about uh, open source and monetization Friday morning at 9 o'clock, because this thing now pays my bills. Uh, and yeah, JobRunner now has, in less than 1.5 years, done this amount of jobs, 83 billion, I think it's, I don't know how to spell it. Um, what is there else? The, the part that pays my bills, JobRunner Pro. It has an extended dashboard where you can search. It has Spring a transactional integration. It has workflow, queues, batches, a whole lot of stuff. And since I'm really um, worried a little bit about our environment, uh, part of the revenue goes to planting trees. And we now have about uh, oh yeah, I have a forest of 4,000 trees, if I am correct. What is planned? Um, make it even faster, uh, feature requests from you, and better GraalVM native support. And then time for the Q&A. But first, uh, a big shout out to Started KBC. Uh, they helped me and still help me with uh, yeah, a little bit of, how must I say, coaching and Flanders Investment and Trade. It's really cool here in Belgium that we get subsidies to export startups. And then the conclusion for JobRunner. Uh, you only need to add one dependency. You can uh, use a Java 8 Lambda or a job request. It's distributed by default. It has a built-in dashboard. And it's resilient thanks to automatic retries. Then remember to give feedback on this talk. Start the GitHub repo if you like it. Uh, convince your manager to get a pro version if you would uh, convince, uh, would, if you're enjoying JobRunner. And last but not least, come get some candy and safe travels home. Are there questions perhaps? Yes. That's yeah. Uh, so the question was: uh, I saw that you can requeue jobs and delete jobs from the dashboard. Is there a way to do not to do so? And that's the really difficult part about being open source developer. It's a trading: where do I put features in? I is it in the free version, in the pro version? And yeah, the pro version we have dashboard authentication where you can. Uh, yeah, log in with OpenID and, and put these buttons uh, dip behind some roles. Other questions? Yes? How do you know how many jobs have been run already? That's a good question. Um, we have an anonymous API that collects some data on how many jobs that were completed. Uh, you can turn it off. It's uh, described in, there is a blog post about it, and it's also described in the documentation how you can turn it off. Uh, the things that we gather is like the amount of succeeded jobs, the amount of background job servers that you are running, and that's it, I think. Yes? Uh, that's a really nice question. Uh, since beginning of September, I hired my first developer. So it's uh, Ismaila. He's uh, just finished on the VAB and he's helping with uh, adding new features to JobRunner. So yeah, uh, perhaps important thing, the bus factor of this thing is one, which I don't like. That's why I decided to hire um, Ismaila. 
and um, for all the pro customers, they get uh, access to the source code of the pro version because I don't want them to get into trouble the moment that I get hit by a bus. I don't hope that happens, but just in case. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, um, nice question again. Oh, this is a long time ago that we uh, have done it, and it's also on our roadmap, in fact, to add automated um, tests also performance-wise. But we... I, I, can I get back to you? Because I don't want to lie about it. Um, feel free to drop by and drop me your notes, and then, then I can give you some input. But uh, it's over... there. 3,000 jobs per second easily. All right. Thank you very much. Free candy. End of the story.